Happy Sunday, Bridge family. Happy Sunday and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We love you. We, your children, rise up and call you blessed. We honor you on this day and celebrate all that you are, all that you've done for us, and all that the Lord has used you to be a blessing to the world. Can you do us a favor and bow your head really quickly for a word of prayer? Gracious God, our Father, we love you, we honor you, we celebrate you, we worship you, Lord. But most importantly and more regularly, God, we are loved by you. So we, your children, Lord, we, your sheep, just celebrate you today, Lord. We honor you and give you all the glory and all the wisdom, all the power, all the strength that, and the adoration that is due your matchless name. Lord, we're grateful for your love and for your faithfulness and for your consideration. Lord, we're grateful for your word that you've given us to shine a light on all the dark places. And we're grateful for the promise, Lord, that if we uh, stand in need of help, Lord, if we stand in need of wisdom, that we, your children, can ask you who promised to give liberally, give liberally of such, Lord. So we celebrate you, we honor you, Lord, and ask that you just meet every single need that is present in the building and, and, and virtually uh, present today, Lord. We honor you. We ask, Father God, that you continue to be Jehovah Jireh. We ask that you continue to provide and make ways out of no way, Lord. We ask that you continue to be Jehovah El Roy, Lord. We ask that you just continue to see us, Lord, wherever we are, Lord. We're grateful for your love, for your consideration, and we're grateful, God, for the promise that says that you'll never leave us, that you'll never forsake us, and that you'll be with us even into the ends of the age. We love you, we honor you, and we celebrate you for always making a way. These and all blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Come on, can you just testify wherever you are that the Lord has made a way? Come on, it can be financial, but he's made a way. You could have stood in need of healing and, and found that the Lord has made a way. Whatever you need, God is faithful to perfect those things which you stand in need of, and we love them. from further up north, maybe you're watching from right here on the east coast, maybe you're watching from the west coast or down south. Let us know, drop a couple hearts, drop where you're, where you're listening from. Today's scripture will be coming from 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 12 through 19 and it reads, 
It so happened that as she continued in prayer before God, Eli was watching her closely. Hannah was praying in her heart silently. Her lips moved, but no sound was heard. Eli jumped to the conclusion that she was drunk. He approached her and said, you're drunk. How long do you plan to keep this up? Sober up, woman. Hannah said, oh no, sir, please. I'm a woman, hard used. I haven't been drinking, not a drop of wine or beer. The only thing I've been pouring out is my heart, pouring it out to God. Don't for a minute think I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy and in such pain that I've stayed here so long. Eli answered her, go in peace, and may the God of Israel give you what you have asked of him. Think well of me and pray for me, she said, and went her way. Then she ate heartily, her face radiant. Up before dawn, they worshiped God and returned home to Ramah. Elkanah slept with Hannah, his wife, and God began making the necessary arrangements in response to what she had asked. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What's up, family? So glad to be with you this evening. I'm with your boy, Pastor Ramo, a.k.a. Pastor Ray. And listen, I just want to reemphasize what's already been lifted up. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there, all of the beautiful queens and all of the wonderful princesses out there, and especially those mothers who are mothers to those of us who belong to the bridge. Are any mothers who are members of the bridge? I want to salute you on this um, this Mother's Day evening, as well as our lead pastor of Asbury, uh, the Dr. Iantha Mills. We want to just salute you and all the work that you've done, the mother to those of us who you've been mothers, a mother to, uh, even in ministry. And so we salute you on this evening. Listen, we have a treat for you this evening. One of my special friends, and I like to say my sister, uh, is coming forward to greet you this evening on this Mother's Day Sunday. I'm going to read a little bit, but I just want you to know she's somebody that I have no qualms about introducing because she is just that powerful and amazing and anointed, and I know that she has a word for you. Elder Paulette Davidson is God-fearing, strong, creative, and spiritually rooted. She has been surrounded by ministry all of her life, and now has a passion to be a servant of Jesus Christ. Elder Paulette has earned a bachelor's in social work from Lock Haven University and a master's in divinity from Howard University, where I know we got a lot of folks from Howard University here at the bridge. <laughs> she served nine years in the Army Reserves as a chaplain. Her skills, her skills set flourish in inspirational speaking, uh, counseling on different levels, grief and trauma counseling, and mental health therapy. Her passion for helping others excel through different issues and adversities is an amazing trait that structures her character of poise and humility. And I know that to be true. Listen, she has been somebody who has helped to guide me even in my own spiritual ministry uh, career. Elder Paulette Davidson is the founder and CEO of Harvesting Ministries, Jeremiah 17.8, that includes a woman's ministry called Sister Circle. She currently works as a hospice chaplain for Capital Caring Health. Elder Paulette Davidson is a native of Pittsburgh, but currently resides in Merlin. She is a proud mother of Amara Tamin. She often quote, and her daughter is so amazingly precious. She is a beautiful mom herself, uh, um, Sister Paulette. She often quotes, do not dwell on your past, for it cannot be changed, but focus on your present, in order to enhance your future. Even if your yes becomes a no, still press towards the mark of God. Listen, family and friends, I just want to let you know that the sister that's coming before you is someone that I've known for a couple of years now. She was introduced to me at the well, and she has uh, followed me, and I follow her through this uh, lifelong ministry that we're assigned to. Listen, if you haven't had a chance, please, as she comes forward, I'm going to put it in her pocket to make sure that she introduces her own ministry and tells you how you can find her. But I want you to drop some hands, drop some hearts, drop some love, and just applaud wherever you are for Elder Sister Paulette Davison. Come on and put your hands together and welcome her to the pulpit. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, of course, to Pastor Raymond. Thank you to the Bridge of Abyssary UMC and everyone who's here in attendance, those who are streaming live. Thank you so much. I thank you for this opportunity. I feel very honored and blessed. 
Um, like I'm going to be obedient to the pastor. So <laughs> I'm Elder Paulette and I have my own ministry called Harvesting Ministries. Um, I've been doing it for a year now on Facebook Live. I have Instagram. I have a YouTube channel. You can find me under Elder Paulette Davison or Harvesting Ministries, whatever, you know, blesses your spirit. Um, I do Wednesday, Worthy Wednesdays at 7 a.m. and Sanctify Saturdays at 8 a.m. Amen. Um, so please check me out if you can. I definitely would love to have you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get into our word. Happy Mother's Day to all my mothers and myself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, clap it up for myself. Thank you. Listen, because y'all know it is not easy. Praise the Lord. All right. Struggle is real. Amen. Tweet, tweet. Oh, so this morning or this afternoon, I'm sorry. I'm used to doing up at 7 a.m. This afternoon, I'm going to talk to my mothers. Of course, I'm talking to everyone out there. So I pray that this message touches you and reaches you in your belly and your spirit and your season. But of course, I'm really talking to my mothers and my queens on this afternoon. Amen. So I'm going to go start in the text of 1 Samuel chapter 1. I know the scripture was read, but I just want to focus on 12 through 14. And then we're going to get in the word. All right. I'm, I'm simple old preacher. I, I talk to you. You talk back at me. Amen. Tweet, tweet. All right. Praise the Lord. Ain't that many in the building, but there's some. Amen. And y'all know it's been a year <laughs> since we've been in the building. So <laughs> it's nice to be amongst the saints. Amen. So 1 Samuel chapter 1. I'll be reading from the message version, um, starting from verse 12 through 14. And so happened that as she continued in prayer before God, Eli was watching her closely. Hannah was praying in her heart silently. Her lips moved, but no sound was heard. Eli jumped to the conclusion that she was drunk. He approached her and said, you're drunk. How long do you plan to keep this up, sober up woman? Mm, Jesus, for a few minutes, I want to come from the title to be mindful of who's watching. Mm, Jesus, be mindful of who's watching. Let us go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for today. We thank you for waking us up uh, this morning. We thank you for our mothers. We thank you for those who have birthed folks into existence in the spiritual and the natural. We thank you, Father, for being with us in this season on today. So I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to cover us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Father. I'm asking for that oil to flow from the inside out like never before, Father. Give us a shift in the atmosphere. Give us healing that we need on the inside and on the out, Father. I'm praying for those who might be standing in the gap or standing in the need of prayer, those who are grieving, those who might be going through because they lost their loved one last year or even on today. So I'm praying, Father, for the peace that passes all understanding. I'm praying for the comforter to come in their bedrooms, in their homes, in their living rooms, even on their jobs. We ask, Father, that you hide me behind the cross. Let them not see me, but see Jesus. Let them not hear me, but under the sound of my voice, hear your anointing. Let your spirit flow, Father, from this moment forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we know it's customary if you look back in the text. And again, I'm a preacher where I encourage you to do your own research. Amen. Don't just believe everything I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Go through and study on your own. But if you look back in the text, it was customary back then for priests to rotate the schedule to sit in the sanctuary. This was to ensure that folks were keeping it holy and, and for them to be available for anyone who might need them. Now, as you do some of your reading and your research uh, about Hannah, you knew that she was a frequent flyer in the sanctuary. Amen. She believed that only God could give her what she desired to have. And if you don't know what had a desire to have was to a child. Amen. I know it's Mother's Day and we're talking about mothers, but I wanted to talk about Hannah. That's all right. She desired to have a child. If you don't know the text, go back a little bit further. You'll read that Enoch that she was married to had to get another wife because Hannah could not produce children. And back in the biblical days, you had to have reproduction of your lineage of children to carry out your, your name, to carry out your worth. Hannah loved Enoch and Enoch loved her, but she could not have a child. So her, her little, you know, his side chick or you want to call side wife, praise the Lord. Um, tweet, tweet. You know, she came in, is popping out kids left and right. 
And Hannah still was so nice and humble, and she was still peace about it, but she kept going to the sanctuary. She did not keep going. And even if you go back, you'll see Enoch say, you know, why you keep going? Things okay. We love you. You love us. You know, what's going on? But Hannah said, okay, I hear you, husband. Praise the Lord. But I'm still going to go to the sanctuary. For she believed that only God could give her what she desired. Therefore, I'm sure all the priests in the sanctuary knew her by name, maybe not. (laughs) <laughs> maybe by what she wore. And I'm sure they saw how emotional she would always be. But on this day in the text, Hannah was deeply depressed and saddened in her tears and her body. I mean, she was so full that words could not come out of her mouth. And it became so uncontrollable for she could not say any more or, or, or to be able to say anything. But all she did was maintain her kneeling stance of reverence. Mm, Jesus. Mothers, I want to speak to you on this afternoon. How many of you have been speechless or depressed? Uh, How many of you have been so low because the pain was so deep? Come on, beloved. We're going to talk about it this afternoon. We're going to keep it real. When life was to hit you maybe with a jab on your right, come on, somebody, and then it gave you an uppercut to your face, come on, what did you do? Mm, Jesus. Who did you seek or ask for for help? Who did you go for for advice? Who did you look at for support? My God, are you going to the altar? Mm, Jesus, in this season, my mothers, there is going to be, or maybe you have already experienced some type of pain that hits you to your core. And God needs you to get into a kneeling stance of reverence. You don't have to say no words. You ain't got to play no music. You don't even got to light no candle. My God, all he requires of you is to get in position. Come on, somebody, to release and to receive. I'm going to say that again. Come on, mothers. I need you to get in position to release and and receive. If you need to hashtag me, type it in the chat. You can go ahead and do that. Get in position to release and receive. Elijah was a prophet and a priest, amen? He was a man that the community knew and they well respected. So why would he call Hannah out? If you don't remember, it says in the text, Eli jumped up to the conclusion that she was drunk. He approached her and said, you're drunk. How long do you plan to keep this up? Sober up, woman. Clearly, he had never seen no one in so much pain that, or that emotional before. Therefore, his assumption was understandable However, beloved, here are two things that I want you to take away from this point. I need you to see this. The first point was that in this season, folks are not going to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Mm, Jesus, come on, somebody. They're going to see you in the physical and assume that they know who you are, and they're going to try to call you out. And they might have already did it. Tweet, tweet, amen. But mothers, I need you to be mindful of folks who think they know you and your situation. Wherefore, you must be in relationship, come on somebody, and connection with God in order not to take everyone's advice, Mm, Jesus, nor to listen to what they say if it's not in alignment with the Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Come on somebody, that has not already told you, showed you, or share with you. Come on, someone. I'm talking about relationship. I'm talking about knowing the discernment. I'm talking about knowing what spirit's voice sound like for yourself. If people are trying to come for you, because they will, all right? Amen. If they trying to talk at you, because mothers, we know it, always try. You ain't supposed to do that way. Why are you saying that to your child? If it's not in alignment with the spirit, go ahead and keep your mouth shut and turn your back. Amen. Second point, the preach wa- the priest watched Hannah, I'm sure, year after year. Listen, if y'all go back and do your research, this was not just like yesterday or a couple months. This lasted for years. So I'm sure year after year, as Hannah kept coming to the sanctuary, she kept going to the Lord in prayer. I'm sure they saw her, her come in and out, whereas she might not have paid attention to them. But, but God, Eli, the prophet, was watching her. Mm, Jesus. Y'all should have shouted right there. It's okay. Praise the Lord. Y'all shouting at home? I know you are. Put your little hearts out. Praise the Lord. Listen, mothers and queens, you got to be mindful of who's watching you in this season. Mm. Our children watch us for sure. We already know it. The good and the bad. Praise the Lord. They watch everything. Our spouse, our family is always watching us because they always trying to tell us what to do. <laughs> tweet, tweet. And how to do it. Amen. But have you thought about 
how your coworker or your boss or maybe even your hairdresser are looking to see how you handle your life battles. Y'all know how it is. You sit and get your hair done and you tell all. Oh, Tweet, tweet, all right? I do it sometimes too, amen? Praise the Lord. You know, you might tell all, you might say, I need to do this, I need to do that. And they're probably wondering, well, how are you handling that? You know, how are you so strong? Or, or how are you not, not falling? And then you have someone say, how is she not falling? Or, or how is she even still walking? Some of them say, how are you, how are you not stumbling? Or, or how are you even stable? Listen, it's because as soon as we get to the level of Hannah, remember Hannah was so emotional that she could not say a word. She became so overwhelmed with the grief and the agony of not having a child that the prophet thought she was drunk. So imagine when you get to that level, beloved, or queens, I'm talking to my mothers, when it's so hurtful or it hurts so bad and you get to that level of breakdown. Come on, I'm talking about mentally and emotionally, et cetera, then folks assume that we can't handle the pressure. Come on, somebody. I know we all been there. Come on, ladies. We all been there. People assume because we break down, we don't know what we're doing. I came to tell you that's lies boots, okay? Amen. Hashtag me if you need to. Lies boots. Breakdowns happen because it's required for a release. Come on, somebody. We are women who are and know how to burn things in the physical and the spiritual. Come on. Therefore, we don't need, we always need to release what's going on for us. We, we, we do more harm to ourselves than good when we don't release. So when you see us mothers having a moment like Hannah, don't be so quick to judge. We not drunk. We not out of our minds. We just going through. Amen. The process called life. We don't know who is watching us. So in this text, beloved, I talked about Elijah and I talked about how he's a prophet. So if you don't know anything about prophets, prophet and prophetess are those who are directly divinely connected with God. Wherefore, they do not speak over or into your life without God giving them what to say. So if you go back in the text in 1 Samuel, this is what Hannah responds to Eli after he tells her she's drunk and she needs to get her life together. Clearly, I'm paraphrasing. Amen. So Hannah responds in verse 15 through 16. Hannah said, oh, no, sir, please. I'm a woman hard used. I haven't been drinking not a drop of wine or beer. The only thing I've been pouring out is my heart, pouring out to God. Don't for a minute think I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy and it is so much pain that I've stayed here so long. Eli answered her, verse 17, go in peace and may the God of Israel give you what you have asked of him. Think well of me and pray for me, she said, and went her way. Then she ate heartily. Her face was radiant. Upon up before dawn, they worshiped God and returned home to Ramna. Elkanai slept with Hannah, his wife, and God began making the necessary arrangements in response to what she had asked for. Look here, beloved. Hannah did not tell Eli, the priest or the prophet, all her business. Come on, somebody. She didn't ask him to lay hands on her. Come on. She didn't get, tell him everything that was going on or what was wrong. She, was, she just told him, listen, I'm not drunk, but I'm in pain. Amen. And she needed to pour out to God. Mothers, when something is wrong, speak your truth. Come on, somebody. I need you to own your throat chakra. Own who you are. Sometimes you have to let people know in a nice, kindly manner. Hey, I see what you're saying, but that's not me. Amen. His response was the confirmation, though, watch this, that Hannah needed to hear in order for her spirit to be lifted and for the blessings to be manifested. Mothers, everything that you do in secret, my God, or discuss with God does not have to be shared in detail with anyone, not even the ministers, come on somebody, not the pastors, not the lay leaders, not even the usher board, amen, tweet, tweet. Everything you do in secret does not have to be shared. You share what you can discern God is allowing you to release, if anything. Make sure the response aligns with your spirit. I'm talking about knowing your relationship and your discernment. But when I came to this point, beloved, while doing my studies, I thought it was odd that all the times that Hannah went to the sanctuary and she saw Eli before and the other priests, they never spoke to her before. I'm sure she was emotional other times, maybe not to this extent, but I'm sure they saw her pattern coming day after day and year after year. 
Why would they not say anything? No encouragement, no consoling. Well, remember, beloved, I said Eli was a prophet who hears directly from God. However, he cannot move or speak into someone else's life unless God gives them the revelation to release. Mm, Jesus, God could not release Eli until Hannah was at the point of breaking. Mm, Jesus, come on, somebody. Until Hannah's tears were being manifested in her sewing as she was going through, God was allowing her pain, listen to this, to produce things in her that was necessary, come on somebody, before receiving the blessing. That means as she was sowing year after year, as she was crying out year after year, in the stance of in reverence to God on her knees, her pain and her tears were manifesting something in the atmosphere that was getting her ready for the harvest. Come on, someone. You cannot reap the harvest or you cannot manifest anything if you're not sowing into it. Her tears were sowing. Her pain was sowing. So year after year, God said, you still got to come. You still have to pray. You still have to fast. Come on, somebody. You still need to read your word. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was about her manifesting something at the altar, because then as she kept manifesting and got to the breakdown of no words is when Eli, the prophet, was able to move and be released. Come on, mothers. I, I, you might not have the blessing or the thing you desire yet. And, and I'm sorry that I, I came to tell you the realization. It's because you have not sown enough yet. Woo. You have ignored your pain instead of praying in it. Come on, somebody. You have found substance to numb your pain away. Uh, there have been prophets watching you. Come on, somebody. Folks who have the gift and the ability to help you out of your situation, but they can't move for you because you have not sown enough. You have not sown enough. Listen, Mothers, especially my single mothers. Listen, I'm a single mother, amen? Especially my single mothers. Don't ever think that God is not going to require more out of you. When you ask for more. The things of Christianity is about relationship. It's about going deeper and deeper with God. You can expect the blessing and not think it's not going to cost you something. Hannah wanted a child. He come on my seat. She hit her, her husband went and got another wife, the side chick, whatever you want to call her, the extra wife, the second wife. He went and got that and got what he wanted. But that does not mean it fulfilled what Hannah needed. So she knew even with her side chick taunting her and calling her names and trying to put the children in front of her like little things and teasing her, she still went to the altar. She still went to the sanctuary and prayed. She prayed in her pain. She prayed past whatever people kept telling Even her husband said, stop going. He said, everything's okay. I got my kids. You don't got to go no more. She said, okay, bless you. You know how some of us do. Praise the Lord to men. And then we kept on going. <laughs> tweet, tweet in the background. Amen. She kept going. But imagine, beloved, if she was not obedient to her spirit. Imagine if she listened to her husband and not her spirit. Mm, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Christianity requires and costs you something. If you know Jesus, he went on the cross for what? Our sins. He got to walk on earth with us, but it cost him something. He did not spend the time of being here for 40 years just because he wanted to do sunshine and rainbows and have miracles and, and, and blessings. It cost him something. He had to continue being in agony as he went up into the mountain or he went into the wilderness trying to understand, my God, my God, are you sure this cup is for me? Are you sure this has to be the end? But he knew it cost him something. If we knew Jesus had to go through, are we not? Supposed to go through and be Christ-like? Mothers, you are carrying your, your cross. And queens, are you praying while you're carrying your cross? Or, or are you praying while you're in pain or hanging from the cross? We are still in a pandemic. A whole year later, deep, y'all, we deep. Listen, sweet, sweet, vaccine or not, praise the Lord, we still deep in this pandemic, all right? Similar checks are still coming, praise the Lord. Um, some of us are going back to work. Some of us are getting a new job. Tweet, tweet. And just like Hannah, there is nothing better than a mother's prayer. Yeah. I love how I say that because even though Hannah was not a mother yet, she still was getting in a reverence or stance of what mothers do. When you know your grandmother got you through something because she went to the altar and prayed. 
You know when you was in trouble, you wasn't doing something, and your mama knew it before you even told them because they went to the altar and they prayed. And just like Hannah, there's nothing better than a mother's prayer. For when a mother goes to the altar, things can shift in the atmosphere. So I'm wondering uh, on this season, even on this Mother's Day, what are you shifting in the atmosphere? Come on, someone. We need our mothers to be standing together as one for a shift for change. We need a shift for better to come. Come on, someone. We need a shift for the genocide to stop in Africa. Come on, someone. We need a shift for third world countries to stop treating women like property. We need a shift for black lives to matter. Our mothers, even for George Floyd, who did he call out to in his last breath but his mother? There's something about a mother's prayer. This afternoon, mothers, I came to be your Elijah. I came to be your prophet or prophetess to let you know that God has seen you praying. God has seen some of you crying in the midnight hour. God has seen some of you trying to release the heaviness behind the closed doors and your mouth muffled so the children won't hear you screaming because it's getting so bad and you don't know how the bills are going to be paid and you're not sure how you're going to make ends meet to feed them the next day. I came to tell you as your Elijah that God sees you where you are. He come on on our seat today. And it's time to get in the kneeling stance. He come on on our seat today. You've been kneeling for a long time. You've been kneeling year after year. You've been fasting year after year. And you keep saying, I, I seem like I'm stuck or I'm not going nowhere. It's all right. Have a spirit of hand. Keep going in humility. Keep going and unctioning of knowing that you're going to receive something. In this season, my mother's. As you are going through the shift in the atmosphere, know that it's going to cost you something. And what it's costing you is requiring you to release whatever God needs you to release. The pain you're going through is necessary for your process. You assume it would not take all that. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, it does. Tweet, tweet. You understand me? If you want more, it's going to require more. If you want to have more from God, it's going to require more. So as you are going in the season of Mother's Day, as you're grieving the loss of your mother, as you're going through having no job, as you're trying to understand how your son got into jail, I need you to go to the altar. He come on on us today. And so... Your tears in prayer. He called Bananasi. Don't let go. He called Bananasi. Don't tell everybody your business. Come on, somebody. I need you to take it to the Lord in prayer. The beauty about Hannah was she didn't have to tell the prophet anything. All she had to do was correct him and said, Hey, I'm not drunk. I'm in pain. I've been here a long time and I have not got what I wanted. And all Elijah had to say was like, woman, go forth, go ahead in prayer, and the Lord will be with you. That's all she had to do. Imagine, beloved, if we sit there to look at our situation of stop trying to, to advocate for ourselves or stop trying to make an explanation on why we're doing what we're doing. And we just tell people, hey, I hear you, but that's not me. I, I understand what you're saying, Grandma, but, but that's not where I'm at in this season. Sometimes the silence can be more powerful than you saying something. Be mindful in this season. He come but on our CA. He shall but on our CA. Whatever you need that you're desiring from the Lord, I ask you to bring it to the altar on this afternoon. And the beauty about Hannah was she came to the altar every time, and it wasn't about her coming to the altar just to, to do it again and again, but she came to the altar to release it. That means, beloved, whatever you bring to the altar this morning, leave it where it is. Stop picking up some stuff that should have been left at the altar years ago. Stop trying to say and blame your, your baby father. Stop trying to blame your, your cousin or your auntie. Stop trying to blame your mother. Sometimes you got to look in the mirror and check yourself. Leave it at the altar. He come by on our CA. And do it. If it has to be the ugly crowd, be the ugly crowd. If you got to yell, yell. If you have to scream, scream. Whatever you need to do to release. Release it in this season. He come but on our CA. He come but on our CTA. Have a shifting of hand. He come but on our CA. And watch how God will bless you. He come but on our CA. Come on our CTA. He shall but on our CTA. I challenge you on this week 
beloved. If that's you, whatever the word I spoke, and it touched you on the inside, on the out, if there's tears running down your face right now, I challenge you to lift your hands in reverence. I challenge you to go throughout this week lifting your hands and kneeling on your knees. He cut but I'm not today. Getting in the stance to receive what God is going to give you. Don't say a word. He come but I'm not Don't play no music. He come but on Don't light no sage. He come but on today. Come on, somebody. Don't share it with no one. Just go to the Lord in prayer. The old folks you say, get in your secret closet. He come but on Shut the door behind you. He come but on today. And give it to God in prayer. All this week I challenge you for seven days. Give it to God in prayer. And watch him shift. He come but on Watch him shift things in the natural because you sold in secret. He come but on He come but on come but on That's the missing piece. You've been sowing in public for too long. You've been sharing things with other people in the spirit too long. Stop telling them your blessing. They acting like they're happy, and I'm sorry, baby girl, they're not happy for you. Okay? They don't really love you. They don't really care. It's not about who they are, but in this season, it's about you and God. If you haven't realized anything in the pandemic, the shift was about you and God. COVID was about you and God. To get you in a stance of reverence, to get you by yourself. So he can do some things on the inside and he'll come on the outside. I pray that you be encouraged on this week. I pray that you be obedient to the spirit and the unctioning of what God has challenged you to do. Have faith and walk in that faith but do it in secret. God bless you. Amen. Listen, oh. I want to thank my sister so much. I know we, 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 we got to be six feet apart. <laughs> but um, what I want to do, what I want to do, your word, moving so much um, and we've been we've been preaching in the theme of beyond belief um, which is which I think so much of what you said resonated with me but what it also touched on what I thought about was there are so many people who have lost their mothers mothers who have lost daughters mothers who have lost children and I wanted to ask if you could just pray for those who in this season um, this Mother's Day is different right they've been shaken they've been hurt they, they it shift there's a shift. And if you could just spend a few moments just in prayer for those who, who life is different on this side of COVID. I mean, even to this moment, there are people still that are passing away. Someone told me of a 36-year-old mom who passed away last week who leaves behind two children. And so I just want to recognize that this year is different. Um, so if you just could find a, a space in your spirit to just pray for those who are, are experiencing life in a different place. Um, we appreciate you, and we hope that you have been moved by the word of Elder Paulette, um, but I think it's just important if you are someone at home who has seen this season differently, we want to pray for you uh, wherever you are. So we just want to take a moment and encourage you, uplift you, um, and let you know that we're with you in spirit, um, because that's what ministry is all about, just being amongst and with each other. And so I just appreciate that from you. Thank you so much. Let us pray. My brother asked me what was my favorite hymn. <laughs> and I feel like we should sing it before I pray, amen. Because sometimes people are really, when they stand in the gap for prayer, it's because they think God has forgotten about them. They think God is not there. And losing your mother or losing your daughter or, or just losing a mother this year, 10 years, it don't matter. Grief knows no time barrier. It still hurts. It still don't feel good. And leave it to society to remind us every year <laughs> that they're not here. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hot.
We pray this afternoon in the spirit. I'm speaking to spirits in the name of Jesus. Those whose hearts are heavy. He's praying, Father, for those who have a shift of grief. He come but I see it. He come but I see that that you touch them. He come but I see it. Come on, I see that. Touch them in their home. Touch them in their living room. Touch them in their bedroom. He come but I don't see that. He come but I see it. He come but I don't see that. Touch them on the inside and on the out. In the name of Jesus. He come but I don't see that. Father, for they've been grieving for a while. He come but I don't see that. So I'm asking. For the spirit to whisper in the air. I'm asking for the unctioning of peace that passes all understanding. I'm asking for them, for them to seek you and not themselves. I'm asking them for to turn away from the alcohol. I'm asking them to put down the drugs. He cut but all see I'm asking, Father, for them trying to stop being in the toxic of relationships in the name of Jesus. But I'm asking for that they try you and not no one else. He come but on see I'm asking about that even in the midnight hour. He come but on all see when the lights are off. He come but on all see He come but on all see and they're by themselves. He come but on all see that they get in the stands. He come but on all see and sow their tears. He come but on all see it. Come on all see Sow their tears unto you. He come but on all see and as they sow, he come but on all see that each day they start feeling lighter in the name. Jesus, he come bananasite. They start feeling your presence like never before. He come bananasite. I'm even praying for the young lady who said her, her grandmother is transitioning. He come bananasite. And we know when you transition, that means you come to a new life. He come bananasite. But it's not easy. He come bananasite. To be absent from the body. He come bananasite. And to be present with the Lord. He come bananasite. So I pray for her family right now in the name of Jesus. He come bananasite. Prepare around the bedside. He come but all that your anointing flow like never before. He come but on Oxy Day. That they can hear you whispering in their ear. And even as she travels on this weekend, Father, I ask for the angels to carry her. He come but on Oxy Day. Come on Oxy Day. He shall but on carry her as she even gets on and off transportation. He come but on Oxy Day. Carry her wherever she goes. He come but on Oxy Day. And I'm praying for them to come together. He shall but on Oxy and to be a light to each other. He come bananasite. He come bananasite. For sometimes in this season we must say farewell. He come bananasite. But it's not farewell for long. He come bananasite because to be again absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I pray, Father, for this Mother's Day, for those who have been in agony for so long, that you hold them in your arms. He come bananasite. Give them that comfort and peace. Even for those who have recent loss or even maybe losses from years ago, hold them in your arms. Let them have REM sleep on this week. I pray for REM sleep. And a REM sleep is a sleep that I pray by the day be able to just dwell in you. Seek your face like never before. Hear your voice like never before. Feel their angels around them like never before. And to know that you are still there. That there's still work for them to do in the vineyard. That is why they're still there. It's not their time yet. I know some of you want to let go. I can feel it in the spirit. I know some of you are sitting there wondering, why me? Why am I still here? I can hear the spirit say, it's not your time yet. He come but on us, he said, hold on. He come but on us, he said, if you don't got nothing else to hold on to, hold on to God's unchanging hand. He come but on us, he said, wherever they might be, in the jail cells, I pray for those. In the hospitals, I pray for those. In the mental institutions, I pray for those who are even sitting there suffering suicide or contemplating it right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for you to break the chain and the yoke. He come but on us, he said, of darkness and depression right now in the name of Jesus. He come but on us, he said. Let the light shine. He come but on us, he said. Send someone to send them the light and the love that they need. He come but on us, he said. That they know it was only but God that saved them. 
And it is done. He come but on And it is done. He come but on us. It is done. He come but on us in Jesus' name. And I seal it with the blood. Amen. And I share. He come but on us. 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 He shall but on us. He come 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 but on us. Hallelujah, Jesus. He come but on us. He come but on us. He come but on us. I tell you, but on us. It is done. He come but on us. He come but on us. He come but on us. He shall but on us. Hallelujah, Jesus. He come but on us. He come but on us. Hey, come on, I'll see it. Hallelujah. It is. He come on, I'll see it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hananasi. He come on, I'll see it. Come on, I'll see it. He shall not see it. He come on, I'll see it. Come on, I'll see it. He come on, I'll see it.
with that word, if you feel also led to sow into the bridge, you can visit us at thebridgedcumc.org or text GIVE in your amount to 202-688-0217. Again, that is thebridgedcumc.org or text GIVE in your amount to 202-688-0217. Praise the Lord, Bridge family. Scripture says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Listen, we know Hannah had to believe that the Lord could do just what she was praying for, and that's why she went to the temple each and every year. We are believing God for bigger. We are believing God that he will blow our minds, that he will do for us beyond anything that we could have asked, anything that we could have thought. And so we ask that your heart leaps and your voice shouts that he's able. Come on, declare whatever your situation, whatever the trouble, whatever the circumstance, whatever the trial, whatever the obstacle, whatever the shortcoming, we believe God to be able. He's able to heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to set free. He's able to restore. He's able to fix. He's able to be a bridge over, over expanses that we thought could have never been bridged. We love him and we honor him. Song says, exceeding abundant above all we could ask or think. Exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. According to the power that worketh in you, you, God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill. Every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able, yes, He is. Oh, we know He is. We believe He is. Yeah, He's able. But he said he would do, yeah. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able, yes he is, we believe he is, yeah we know he is, yeah. He's able, yeah. If you believe that God is able, lift your voice and let's declare one more time. God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's not a man that He should lie. He'll fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, He won't give up on you, He's able, yes He is, yes He is, we declare, oh we know He is, He's able, yes He is, yes He is, yeah, oh, oh, oh. You sing, oh, 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 he is able, we know, oh, 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 o
He is able. 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 Yeah, He is able. Hey, Creator to create. He is able, just like He did when He said, "Let there be," and it was. He is able. He is able. He is able. And He is able. Yes, He He is able. He's able to heal. He is able. He's able to save. He is able. Yes, He is. He is able. Yes, He is. He can deliver. He is able. Yes, He can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, He can. He will bring you up. He is able. Yes, He will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, He will. You just hold on. He is able. 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 Don't give up. He is able. Don't give in. He is able. In the end, He is able. You will win. We say yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Upon God, cause He won't give up on you. Yeah, don't give up, 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 don't give up on God, cause He won't. Let's declare with one loud voice. Shout and see, he's able. He's able. Hallelujah. God, you're able. God, you're able. And we're believing God for victory this week. If you believe it, just shout, he's able. We love you, and we can't wait to see you back. In Jesus' name, amen.